I went to Burley Pottery and I bought, we're well, going to have to watch on to the end of the video to see what I bought when we recently went to Burley Pottery in Stoke-on-Trent. Hello there, I'm Julie from Julie Davis Flower Workshops and Flower Start, the online flower arranging classes. I've got quite a collection of transfer wear crockery. Some of it I use switching it out seasonally and some of it I display on my walls as decorative pieces of art. I've got green for spring. Blue for summer. Brown for the autumn. And red for Christmas. Now, did you spot any similarities between those pieces? I really like floral pieces. <laughs> There's no surprise there. Or perhaps even village scenes, pastoral scenes of the countryside and coaching inns and castles. What I'm not particularly drawn to is the classic blue willow pattern. Although I do have one piece and that's the cup I use to scoop out my flour when I'm baking cakes. Did you know that the willow pattern features the love story of two lovelorn teenagers? Little birds here, and it's supposed to tell the story of how they escape their families to live together happily ever after. I'm not entirely sure whether that story is made up, but let me know in the comments whether you're an aficionado of the willow pattern. And is that story true, or was it made up? A really good marketing ploy. This is one of my favourite pieces of transfer wear, the classic blue and white, but this one actually came from a finished pottery and I use it every single day when I have my morning cup of tea. <laughs> it's gone a bit cold now. My thrifted teacup and saucer. I love how deep the saucer is. has come from a Finnish or it's generally a Scandinavian pottery. Did you see the last video I posted, the one where we went to visit the world of Wedgwood? And I had to admit that I don't like Jasper wear. Although if you watch that video, you would have seen that some beautiful modern pieces of Jasper wear where the colours have been reversed. Not so much of the white cutouts on the blue background, but some little blue details onto the white. And that was particularly noticeable in some of the Christmas decorations. And if you haven't seen that video already, I'll leave a link to it in the notes under this video. Now, on to Burley. Now, Burley is particularly noted for its Asiatic pheasant pattern. I'd never heard of the Asiatic pheasant pattern until I went on a charity shop expedition with a couple of friends to Birchington here in Kent. You might remember that video. I bought a black and white transfer wear crockery set. Well, it was about four plates and four breakfast bowls. And my friend said that was the classic pattern and I'd never heard of it. And again, I'll leave a link to that video in the description under this one. And this is the Asiatic pheasant pattern. It's got a couple of pheasants on it here and here. Now, I live in England, so my cultural references is the English countryside and gardens. I'm not really drawn to oriental patterns. This Asiatic pheasant pattern seems to be a good mix between a nod to the traditional willow pattern and then something a little more English in style. Apparently the Asiatic pheasant pattern was more popular than the willow pattern and I've done a little bit of delving and trying to build up my knowledge by searching online. So again, if you know more about this than I do, I would really love to learn from you. So let me know what you know in the comments. So I found the black and white transfer wear pottery a couple of months ago and I went out thrifting with a friend just last weekend and I came across this in a vintage store. So it's the beautiful Asiatic pheasant pattern and rather interestingly this one is made by Enoch Wedgwood at Tunstall Limited. Apparently Enoch Wedgwood was a cousin of the much more famous Josiah Wedgwood. Both their potteries were totally separate businesses. We had an amazing time 
at the Burley Pottery, which is actually known also as the Middleport Pottery at Burslem in one of the small villages which has now grown into the wider Stoke-on-Trent. And I was so pleased to be able to pick up their catalogue. Really lovely to flick through and it's got some interesting detail about how they transfer the patterns onto their pottery using rollers and tissue paper. Let's have a flick through it together. And I'll show you some footage of the factory shop. We also stopped for a light lunch in the cafe. It was absolutely delicious, although I had to hold myself back and make sure I ate my lunch before I turned over the plates to check out the back stamps. You could have booked a tour of the pottery, but because we'd already been to visit the Wedgwood factory in the morning, we didn't, but there was plenty to look at and it was all free of charge. Burley Pottery, established 1851. This is the most beautiful catalogue. And I can imagine keeping it for years and years and flicking through it and then perhaps using the pages for crafting. They're lovely and thick. It says here that Burley, established in 1851, has been hand crafting its wares in England and much of what they do remains unchanged since that date. Each piece of Burley is made by hand and mixed with centuries of experience and passion to ensure that the way we make is still the best way. It says here, the patterns that you see on our wares are created from engraved copper rollers, which in themselves are works of art, used daily to print our designs onto special tissue paper using a coloured paste that is made up fresh every day. Copper engraving has been at the heart of every Burley design for the last 170 years. Burley is now the only business in the world to continue to use engraved copper rollers to decorate ceramics. It's a traditional method that is hidden from view and even some of Burley's most ardent fans will have never seen an exposed copper roller. This is because every roller is coated in a thin layer of chrome to protect the delicate, soft copper surface. Here's some more detail about the factory process. If you watch my Wedgwood video, I explained a little bit about moulds and how the soft clay is pressed into shape to make many of the flatware items. And where you've got rounded items such as teapots, they're made with a more liquid clay and then the excess is poured away so you do get that void in the middle. Just imagine the skill needed here to get the flat tissue paper to work its way around the curved surface of a cup. And here, the bright pink glaze. This is something I noticed at Wedgwood as well. Originally, it was coloured using beetroot. And the reason why it's coloured, well, it fires away to a clear glaze, but the factory need to know that they haven't missed a bit. And then on to the Asiatic. It comes in a number of different colours. There's blue here, and a pink over the page. And it's quite a washed out colour, so that's no indication of the age. It's just because of the manufacturing process. And there are the soft pinks. I was rather taken with the blue calico and they also did a red, but that was beyond my budget. But I'm definitely going to be looking out for that in the charity shops. and a little bit of history about the Burley Pottery. It was founded by Frederick Burgess and William Lee. So the name is a corruption of their two names together. It's more formally known as the Middleport Pottery. <laughs> and if you ever do go to the Burley Property, you'll need to hold your nerve a little bit. We traveled here from the world of Wedgwood, a 10 mile journey. We put the postcode into the sat nav and then got slightly worried because the streets we were going down got progressively narrower and narrower. So this pottery is a Victorian brick built building which is in the heart of a Victorian housing area. So hold your nerve and carry on and be warned there's not much parking on site. So as soon as you see a parking space, go for it. Don't go around the tiny car park looking for a better space. They're all equally difficult to get into and out of. Here we are at the front of the Middleport Pottery. Just scanning off to the left is an archway, so you can get into the shop either through the archway or from the car park side of things. There are just so many beautiful things to look at 
and the team here had done a fabulous job of not only merchandising the wares but also setting up these little vignettes and explaining a little bit more about the history of the pottery making of this location. Fabulous blue and white transfer ware. Notice the blue calico fabric at the bottom just hiding some of the pottery that um, was for sale but stored underneath the benches instead of just on top of them. This is the traditional blue willow pattern, so it was £14 a cup, originally full price at £20. So these are the seconds that are for sale in the shop, but I'm not an aficionado, they all looked perfect to me. They're making use of every surface to display the cups and saucers. And here we have the Asiatic pheasant, this time in a sort of mossy green loads of teapots and you could buy individual teapot lids. I think these were five pounds each. Or was that fifteen? I'm not quite sure. I think it was probably fifteen. I would say on the whole everything was quite expensive. And look here, the blue made exclusively for Fortnum and Mason. So I was in very good company. And these bathroom wares made exclusively for D. R. Harris, specialist to Her Majesty the King, His Majesty the King, and the former Queen Elizabeth II. And there are the royal warrants. At first glance, this looks like more Asiatic pheasant, but I think it's actually called Phoenix. It's a slightly denser form of pattern, but very striking in the black and white. have a closer look at one of those teacups and that's for sale £28 originally full price would have been £40 and again stacks of crockery underneath the tables just everywhere you could see plates and plates and plates Regal Peacock that was the name of that particular design and then on to the calico so I recognise the blue calico, the very dark indigo blue. I didn't realise they did it in so many other colours. The plum colours, a softer pink, two shades of green. So each of these plates, £9, which was half price. Here I am again, crouching down, looking underneath the tables. So that's the dark green phoenix. Well, it's not phoenix, is it? Regal peacock. I knew it had a P in there. And a wider view round the shop area. And these little jugs made for Ralph Lauren. £28 each. How many would you fancy putting in your shopping basket? The price would soon mount up. More blue calico. I quite like the shape of the jugs that they did, but I think they were about £50 each, which was really too expensive for me. So they've been produced since 1968 and still in production today. And here's one of those little vignette areas really showcasing their wares. Lovely light streaming into the shop floor. They're the Asiatic pheasant design in the soft powder blue. And then just look up to the left, there's some moulds there showing how the teapots are made. And then round the other side, see the little brush coming out of the spout? That's a sponge and it's just going to use to clean away the excess clay. Now I was on the lookout for a red and white transferware, a new cup and saucer for myself. And I was kind of tempted by these, but the price put me off £24 for the cup and more for the saucer. We're spinning round, that's where we had our lunch in the cafe. It was right on the edge of the canal. And then these are the parts of the pottery that you can look at without paying the fee for the heritage trail. So lots of little cobbled alleyways to walk down and little sneak peeks to the left and right of the actual factory in action. And upstairs, above the main shopping area, was it more of a historical, a museum-like feel to things? That beautiful wrought iron staircase with the wooden handrail 
that's directly on top of the little open area, the alleyway through that I showed you at the beginning of the tour. There's some historic pieces in cabinets, the view out over the courtyard area down below and then we go through to the mould room and that looks like an ear but it's actually the mould for a teacup handle. It's so interesting to look at. I was very tempted to lift the top ups but I didn't want to touch anything. I do hope you've enjoyed coming along with me as I discovered the wonders of Asiatic pheasant at the Burley Pottery. And what did I buy? It was this tiny tankard style jug. It cost me a whopping £25. I would never have paid that much for it in a charity shop. Something of that size, £2 at the most I reckon. So I'll certainly be adding the Asiatic pattern to my shopping list and seeing what I can find in the future. Don't forget to comment and if you can fill in any blank details on the willow pattern or your love of transfer wear, I'd love to hear from you. And if you haven't done already, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell and then you'll always know when I upload a new video. That, oh, if you have ought to head over to my free Facebook group Flower Start World and that's the place to share photographs of your thrifted finds, your flower arrangements and a place where you can ask any flower arranging question. That's all for me for now and I'll see you next time.